Back a long while ago, Jim Rohn recommended a book to me. It was called Coming Out of the Ice by a man named Victor Herman. It was an autobiographical account of Victor's 18 years as a Soviet prisoner in the gulags of Siberia during the years of the Stalinist regime in the, in the former Soviet Union. Victor was born in Detroit, Michigan, where his father, a Jewish immigrant from the Ukraine, was active in organizing unions at the Ford Motor Company. After Henry Ford made a deal with the Soviets, he picked 300 Ford workers and their families to move to the Soviet Union from Detroit to build a new factory for Ford in Gorky, Russia. Victor's family was among them. It was 1931 and Victor was 16 years old. Three years later in 1934, the Great Purge began and many American expatriates were being arrested, deported, or just disappearing. In that same year, September 1934, Victor achieved international notice after he set the world record for the highest parachute jump from 24,000 feet. He became known as the Lindbergh of Russia. When Victor signed the world record documents, which included a space for citizenship, Victor filled in USA. He was commanded to change it to the USSR. After repeatedly refusing to do so because he was born and a citizen of the United States, Victor was arrested in 1938 for counter-revolutionary activities and spent a year in a local prison that included brutal torture. He was required to sit on a bench for 18 hours a day without moving or speaking, facing a door. He was beaten in his kidneys every night for 52 days straight. He was thrown into a cell with violent criminals who tried to kill him, and he received almost no food, among other things. Most of his fellow cellmates during this period died from similar depravities, but Victor's iron will and internal strength saved him. Victor was sentenced to hard labor in a Siberian gulag where he suffered extreme hardships, including beating, starvation, and torture. In the severe freezing temperatures of the winter, Victor survived by various means, such as eating rats that thrived on the frozen corpse which littered the camp. The philosophy of the Soviet prison system at the time was very simple. Prisoners were simply worked to death. The camp inmates were given one impossible task after another with inadequate clothing, impossibly poor equipment, and almost no food. Faced with this kind of existence, a prisoner would inevitably lose his will to live and death would occur not long afterwards. Victor Herman was an amazing exception to this rule. Though he had no real hope of a life outside the camps, though he had nothing to live for in a sense that most of us are used to, there was something inside him that refused to be broken. Maybe out of sheer stubbornness, definitely out of sheer strength of character, he would not break. And this infuriated his captures. At one point, a special task was arranged for Victor, something that camp administrators were certain he would not survive. Early one frozen morning, he was sent out into the forest with only a single guard accompanying him. There he was shown several dozen full-sized trees that had been cut down and stripped of their branches so they could be used as telephone poles. He was then ordered single-handedly to load the trees onto the railroad, railroad flat cars and to do it before the end of the day. It was literally an impossible task, like something out of a nightmare. But Victor did it. Somehow he did it, simply because he refused to be beaten or to give up. It was a miracle, but it actually happened. It was a feat that dwarfs the accomplishments of any Olympic athlete or strongman competition. Victor performed many heroic feats during his years in Siberia, but he considers the challenge with the telephone poles to be his masterpiece. As he worked, he was watched by only the armed guard who just stood there silently throughout the day, probably half frozen to death himself and undoubtedly completely dumbfounded by what was happening right before his eyes. When the impossible job was finished, Victor Herman could not resist walking up to the guard and throwing his arms around him. This incredible display of physical and mental toughness simply had to be celebrated somehow, even if only with a Russian prison guard in the middle of a vast Siberian forest. As Victor described it, the guard allowed him a brief smile. And then the two men trudged back to the camp where Herman endured many more years of incarceration and torture before his eventual release. 45 years later, after being declared innocent of any counter-revolutionary crimes, he was finally allowed to leave Russia. Victor's mother had died in Russia in 1930, his father had died there in the 1950s, and his brother died there by suicide in 1974. Only Victor came out of the ice and made it back to 
to the United States. So what are our lessons here? Well, first, Victor's story shows us what's possible for all of us. Victor shows us the incredible strength, will, and resiliency of the human spirit if we only demand it from ourselves, as Victor did of himself. But why did Victor do it? How did he do it? What motivated him to endure? You see, to me, the most amazing aspect of Victor's survival is the fact that he found motivation entirely within himself. Nobody cared whether he lived or died, and he had no reason to think, no hope to cling on to, that he would ever have a life outside the prison camps. And that fact was made obvious to him throughout every minute of every day. His captors were simply waiting for him to give in, and they grew more and more impatient about it all the time. To me, the fact, the fact that Victor Herman managed to maintain his motivation, his will to live under conditions of total isolation and complete hopelessness is even more amazing than the things he accomplished with his body. But what if you're not Victor Herman? What if you don't have that remarkable strength of will? What if you don't have that depth of intrinsic motivation? How can you still motivate yourself? What can you do to get yourself to do what you know to do, what you want to do even? Even have reasons to why to do it, but still run into a wall of resistance over and over again and continue to give in and fail on your disciplines over and over. What else can you do to motivate yourself? That is what I'm gonna help you solve tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will teach you the trick to motivating yourself. Be sure that you're back for that. In the meantime, tell us, what is one thing you know you need to do that you try to do often, but most often fail to do? Identify one behavior that you wish you had more motivation to stay disciplined with. You need it front of mind when I teach you the motivation trick tomorrow. So write it down in your Darren Daily Journal and share that behavior with us in the comments below.